Hi there, and thank you for clicking on the link to hear a few minutes of pastoral wisdom as we begin to move out of the COVID-19 crisis together. Uh, Boris Johnson has now announced that soon the coronavirus restrictions are going to be lifted. Instead of the government telling us what we can and can't do, the government is about to put the freedom back on our shoulders. We will be able to decide as everyday church what we do in terms of regathering back together. Do we sing? Do we not sing? Do we wear masks? Do we not wear masks? Do we gather back all in one room? Do we wait for a few more weeks? Um, we're in this point where actually now we need to make some decisions as pastors of Everyday Church, but actually all of us need to make some decisions about how we're going to pastor one another and show Christian love to one another as we begin to move from being forbidden to gather to being free to regather. So uh, what I want to do is I want to give you a few words of wisdom from the Apostle Paul. This is uh, Romans 14 to, to 15 is really where I want to focus. Because uh, in, in the Bible passage, the famous Bible passage, which talks about how Jews and Gentiles live together, how, how meat eaters uh, at, or non-kosher meat eaters and only kosher meat eaters can live together in harmony. Uh, as Peter tries to help a fractured church in Rome, there's actually a lot of wisdom for us as we gather back together. Because the reality is <clears throat> we have all responded to Boris Johnson's announcement in different ways. Some of us are over the moon. We're just so excited that we can get back in the room with our church friends and family. We, we, we just can't wait to be shoulder to shoulder, singing at the top of our voices, hugging. Others of us feel really nervous. Others of us, we would actually have been glad if the Prime Minister had taken the choice away from us for a few more weeks. We've got so used to living in lockdown that actually even when we're allowed out we feel nervous and afraid and whichever of those two camps you find yourself in or even if you're somewhere in between it's really important that we grasp that we're the family of God and that we're not free agents to kind of say well here's how I feel other people can sort it out. No in Romans 14 and 15 the Apostle Paul talks to us about how we can be loving towards one another when people are in different places and how we can actually show the love of Jesus, not just as we regather, but in how we regather. So if you've got Romans 14 and 15 open in front of you, you'll, you'll find it helpful. Let, let, let me just read a few of the verses and then explain to you some of the principles that I would love you to be thinking about, reflecting about, praying about as we get ready to regather. Romans 14 verse 1 to 4. Accept the one whose faith is weak without quarrelling over disputable matters. One person's faith allows them to eat anything, but another whose faith is weak eats only vegetables. The one who eats everything must not treat with contempt the one who does not, and the one who does not eat everything must not judge the one who does, for God has accepted them. Who are you to judge someone else's servant? To their own master servants stand or fall, and they will stand. For the Lord is able to make them stand. Paul doesn't take like sides between the Jews and the Gentiles who are disputing about whether or not you should eat meat that was sold in the marketplaces in, in, in Rome. Instead, he says there, there are different views people can take. Show your love for one another, even as people take those different views. He says, yeah, actually, th there is a fear um, which we want to confront. Actually, some of the reasons for not rushing back to church together are not health related. They are like the fact that we've drifted into a culture of fear as a nation. They're, they're to do with getting out of the habit. Um, the fact that we've got other priorities and we do need to be called back to the priority of Christian gathering. It's okay to say, actually, there is a weakness in faith that stops us from gathering. That's okay. But Paul is not saying, you've got a stronger faith, so, so, so look down on those who've got a weaker faith for this moment. He's not saying that at all. He's saying, bear with them. He's saying, recognise, like in our context, recognise that it is really scary for some people to come back together. Recognise that we're in different places. Some people are fit and healthy and are not worried. Other people have underlying health issues and have more reason to worry. Some people have been double vaccinated and can't see what the fuss is about. Other people have not yet even received their first vaccine and therefore feel very fussed about it. He says, don't look down on one another and don't quarrel over disputable matters. I think that's the essence of how we need to pass to one another in love as we come back together after COVID-19. We need to show love to one another and not make peripheral issues central issues. Should we wear face masks? It's not a central issue. 
should we be a metre apart or, or half a metre apart or two metres apart? They're not the main issue. The main issue is, do we love one another? He carries on in verses 13 and 15. He says, let's stop passing judgment on one another. There's a lot of that going on. Fervent anti-vaxxers who are passing judgment on people who've taken the vaccine. I wish the anti-vaxxers were as desperate to communicate the gospel with people as they are to communicate not to get vaccinated to people. Other people who have taken the vaccine and are so aggressive towards those who've chosen not to. Let's stop passing judgment on one another, the Apostle Paul says. Instead, make up your mind not to put any stumbling block or obstacle in the way of a brother or sister. I'm convinced, being fully persuaded in the Lord Jesus, that nothing is unclean in itself. But if anyone regards something as unclean, then for that person it is unclean. Like I've made a clear decision myself about what do I feel comfortable with. But that doesn't mean that it's wrong for other people to feel differently from me. Paul says in verse 15, if your brother or sister is distressed because of what you do, you're no longer acting in love. Now, the overriding principle we've followed as a church throughout lockdown has been, if the government say we're not allowed to do something, we won't do it. If the government say we are allowed to do something, we will do it. So in line with the government's announcement, we will lift many of the restrictions on our gatherings. But lifting a restriction doesn't kind of give us a blank check to not care about those around us. Will I wear a mask when we gather back together? Well, I don't really feel that I need to, but I'm also conscious that there may be people around me who might not even feel they can come to church if I'm coughing and spluttering and hugging them. And I just need to be sensitive. I need to recognize that some of the people that I meet when we gather back together on the 25th of July, they will be desperate to hug me. It's hard to believe, but some people are. But there will be others, they don't even want to elbow bump with me. And that's okay. Paul says it's about love. That's what matters. Verse 19, let's make every effort to do what leads to peace, not division, to mutual edification. Don't destroy the work of God for the sake of food. All food's clean, but it's wrong for a person to eat anything that causes someone else to stumble. It's better not to eat meat or drink wine or do anything else that will cause your brother or sister to fall. So whatever you believe about these things, Keep between yourself and God. I'm going to repeat that verse because I think it's like a a verse in season for where we're at right now. Whatever you believe about these things, keep between yourself and God. You might feel really strongly that we ought to stay in lockdown longer. Great. Keep it between yourself and God. You might feel like we should be throwing off all caution and going for it. Keep it between yourself and God. You might feel we shouldn't vaccinate or we must vaccinate. Great. Keep it between yourself and God. And when we come together, let's come together to worship Jesus in a way that pleases Jesus and doesn't grieve Jesus. The bottom line is, if what I do is going to stop my brothers and sisters feeling comfortable coming back to church, I don't want to do it because I don't live for myself. I live for Christ and therefore I live for them. Let me just end with a couple of final pieces of pastoral wisdom, hopefully in this season. The first one is... That, that, it's not, that as we regather, we're not just regathering together to worship Jesus, but the way in which we regather can worship Jesus. He, the Apostle Paul carries on in verses 1 to 2 of chapter 15. We who are strong, we who feel confident about COVID, we ought to bear with the fe- failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. Each of us should please our neighbours for their good, to build them up. Verses 5 to 7. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you as a church the same attitude of mind towards each other that Christ Jesus had, so that with one mind and one voice you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Accept one another as Christ accepted you, because this brings glory to God. We want to come back together recognising we're in different places and that's okay. We love one another and therefore we want to bear with one another. And lastly, verse 13, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you as a church may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Friends, we're living in a season where the world has run out of hope, where Christian hope is needed more than ever, where there's a lot of fear and where there's a lot of Uh, people mistreating one another in their rush to come out and enjoy their new post-COVID freedoms. Let's not fall down on either extreme. 
Let's not stop loving one another. Let's be people who love the God of hope and who gather back together in the way we love one another and are patient with one another. And as we take the time to look after one another in our differing opinions and our differing fears and nervousness, let's overflow together as a church with hope towards those around us so that anyone who comes realizes these guys, they take my fears seriously. And yet they have a hope which is far greater than COVID-19. I'm excited about the 25th of July. I'm excited about what the government is calling Freedom Day and what we're calling Freedom Sunday. It's such a great opportunity for us to bear with one another, to love one another and to help one another as we gather back together to rebuild our church lives together and to get ready to become post-lockdown church together. I'll see you on the 25th of July.